angelic-looking hero you play is a young boy named Toran. An evil demon spirit who shoots lightning bolts out of his hands has smashed Toran's peaceful village to smithereens. Toran's people have been exiled to a floating cloud-come island in the sky. However, just as the bad guys think they have the upper hand, our champion steps in to right the wrongs by rebuilding his world on the Sky Island, casting out the evil kingdom, then restoring his newly made world of villages to its rightful place, having first had an epic face-off with the demon spirit. Toing and froing from the floating island to the evil lurking in the underground caverns enables you to see this vast 3D, perfectly pixeled environment. Vast geographical landscapes have been created using the new Georama system Sony has created for PS2. And there's plenty of broad scope when you're building Toran's world. You can create new villages, complete with houses, hills, churches, volcanoes, streams and those all-important villagers. Building from a three-quarter overhead perspective, straight away you'll then be free to roam around interacting with this brave new world with a full real-time 360 degrees of movement. Dark Cloud will still bring you a world of hurt in the monster stakes. You'll encounter giant bats that stick fangs in your head, skeleton soldiers and sluggish, ugly ogres which bash you around with their battering sticks. Combat occurs in real time with simple lock-on commands and souped-up shots to the enemy. Taking full advantage of the sharp controls, Toran is a responsive little fella and he can use his nimbleness to dodge danger and then, when the enemy is off their guard, swoop back in for the kill. In summary, we think the game's off-the-wall plotline won't appeal to all, but hey, it's original, and with its imaginative gameplay, Dark Cloud could prove to be a welcome ray of light for RPG fans. ISS Pro Evolution was the best arcade footy game for PlayStation bar none. If you've never played the original, then that's all you need to know. Just go and buy this latest version as soon as it hits the shelves. For the rest of us, the first question that springs to mind regarding this sequel is, is it different enough from the old one to make it worth buying? Right from the very first moment, ISS 2 is impressive. The opening FMV sequence is very polished and wouldn't look out of place in a PlayStation 2 game. All the menu screens have been redesigned too and have a quality high-res appearance. Leap into ISS 2's match mode and you'll cheer as you realise that most of the player names are now spelt correctly. And they look about as close to their real-life counterparts as you can probably get on a PS1. Once you've chosen your team and who you're going to thrash, it's time to watch the players run onto the pitch, stand for their national anthems and then pose for the obligatory team photos. Nothing new there then, but once the action starts, I can guarantee a smile will light up your expectant face as you slowly discover the small but perfectly formed tweaks that Konami has performed. For a start, the players look better, a lot better. The lads on the pitch appear more clearly defined than before, and wait till you see them move. Konami has obviously added more frames of animation to provide fluid movement, but the action still moves at a furious pace. Once you start tearing up and down the pitch, you'll notice that all kinds of wonderful little touches have been added. Your players can now respond more quickly to opposing players, and to the ball, because the controls seem vastly more responsive than before. But that's not all. When the keeper punts the ball upfield, you can now move your players freely before it lands. You can also outrun defenders a bit more easily, which is a definite plus. Like a page 3 model, ISS2 has been cosmetically enhanced in all the right places. So there you have it, a game of speed, skill and class that will most likely never be toppled from its position at the top of the PS1 League. Should you buy this game if you already own the first one? Well, put it this way, once you've sampled the delights of ISS2, there's no going back.
Final Fantasy IX returns us to a world of myth and legend and other mystic guff. FF9 throws just about every ingredient from the series to date into a giant pot of RPG goodness and brings it to the boil. FF9 casts you as Zidane Tribal, a thief. Along for the ride is Garnet Till Alexandros, the granite-faced knight Edward Steiner, and of course the classic Black Mage from the early games, now called Vivi Ornitier. Zidane and his troop of actors set out to kidnap Princess Garnet, but discover that Garnet actually wants to be kidnapped. On the run from Garnet's mother and with the overprotective knight Steiner in tow, Zidane, Vivi and crew end up in one of those world-shattering situations that you always get in RPGs. Graphically, this game makes even FF8 look weak and feeble. The background art is never less than impressive and is often stunning. The animation and detail on the characters you control perfectly mimics that in the FMV scenes, which themselves also manage to make FF8 look truly aged. As for the gameplay, FF9 is pretty linear stuff, but unlike the previous game, the characters and plotline are so colourful and fun that it doesn't seem to matter. You go from one big set piece to another, getting into boss fights, talking to everyone you can, playing cards, watching the optional active time cutscenes and solving simple puzzles. It pays not to rush through the game. Take the time to explore everywhere and talk to everyone. You never know when you might chance across a new card or a piece of equipment or even a cutscene you might otherwise miss. According to Square, the Bouncer is a fighting RPG, although in truth the only obvious RPG element is the ability to boost the character's three statistics with Bouncer points earned during punch-ups. Somewhere between Final Fight and Final Fantasy is the best way to describe the whole thing as it draws elements from both, particularly the storytelling nature of Final Fantasy. The game's plot revolves around three hard-as-nails doormen known as Vault, Scion and Koo, who work at a backstreet bar called Fate. Dominique, the 15-year-old love interest of Scion, is kidnapped by the all-powerful Mikado Group, a huge domineering corporation. This event hints at Dominique's dodgy past and prompts our three unlikely heroes to try and rescue her and find out exactly what the evil Mikado Group could possibly want with her. The story is then fed to you through stunning FMV sequences throughout the game, each sequence setting up another fight. In story mode, you'll pick one of three bouncers to use during each fighting sequence, and the other two will help out. You could face up to six opponents at any one time. As long as the character you control is still standing, you can fight on, even if the other two bouncers have been KO'd. Equally, the leader of your adversaries must be taken down. Do that, and you'll win the fight no matter who else is standing. When you get down to some serious brawling, what you see on screen is a 3D environment that, while beautifully presented, lacks an environment. There isn't enough depth in the combat mechanics to make this a truly successful fighting game. There seem to be no really difficult combos or secret moves. It's initially very easy, and it doesn't get much harder as you play through. The story mode should be completed in under five hours by an average gamer. You'll have to play it through three times using different characters to unlock all the enemy characters for use in the other game modes. In terms of the technical excellence of the FMV animation, its direction and the brightly realized locations, the Bouncer is a remarkable achievement and has the beating of anything else yet seen on the PS2. Where it doesn't fully succeed is as a fighting game. Our verdict? Great to watch, but the lack of gameplay will leave you unsatisfied.
set for a summertime release date, Lotus Challenge is currently still in development with the simulation specialist's Kuju. So the footage you can see here is the story so far. OK, so far we've had arcade-style offerings such as Ridge Racer 5, Midnight Club and Wild Wild Racing to satisfy your need for speed. But the question of which title will satisfy the need for an immaculate, accurate racing sim will be answered this year, perhaps by GT3 or World Sports Cars. But wait, a third possible contender has joined the starting grid, Lotus Challenge. In Lotus Challenge, players will be able to choose from every single lean and dreamy Lotus ever created. The game will have 40 graphically glamorous cars in all, racing against old classics, over 15 racetracks and 10 stunt tracks in locations including London, Tokyo and Florida. Cars will be unlocked the further you progress in all modes. Collection mode should be a good addition, allowing you to gauge how many cars and tracks you've still to unlock. The developers have been gleaning plenty of technical support from the Lotus team to make the game as true to life as possible, and the realistic driving physics promise to set it apart from other games in the genre, allowing the player to perform stunts as well as race. Offering up a new angle on the genre will be challenge mode. This story-based route is most likely to be the main mode and involves choosing one of two characters to control, one male and one female, with cutscenes revealing more along the way. If all you want to do is race, seek solace in the standard arcade and championship modes. These will be in the same vein as Gran Turismo, working your way through tracks, earning cars along the way. upgrade than sequel, GT3 will still be the definitive PS2 driving game. It's the graphics, as simple as that. You can wibble on all you like about the 150 cars, the suspension tweaking, the 15 tracks, the individually recorded exhaust notes and the rest. But it's the graphics that will make you want to marry your PS2. It's the graphics that will make your PS2-less friends weep with envy and offer you their girlfriends in exchange for a short stint at the wheel. If the developers get things right, then eventually you'll see past the glorious visuals and begin to enjoy the rich depth that this game promises. What hits you first is the beauty, and that isn't too strong a word of the tracks and associated environments. Gently swaying trees and dappled sunlight reflecting off the roof of a sleek motor. The replay mode shows off the game to its best with dramatic sunsets, shimmering heat haze and cars moving through the focal range of the virtual camera. It's the closest I've seen to real TV replays in any game on any machine. All this will be worthless without any solid gameplay to back it up. We've only driven one of the Nissans, but it's fair to say that at this stage, the cars are just as demanding to drive as anything in GT2. It may be the case that PS2 owners already in possession of GT2 may wish to hang on for a more rounded full-on sequel. But if you do, you'll miss out on probably the best chance this year to impress all who know you with your good taste in consoles and games. Each issue of PSI2 will be bringing you the coolest game saves for the latest PS2 games for you to download to your PS2 memory card. Once you've unlocked these game-busting saves, you'll be gaming like never before. Downloading the saves is simple. Firstly, make sure you have a PS2-compatible memory card inserted into memory card slot 1 of your PS2. Your memory card needs to have been inserted before you boot the PSI2 disc. If you haven't done so, then switch off your PS2, insert your memory card and reboot. Before using the PS2 cheats on this disc, you must have an existing game save on your memory card for the appropriate game. Your existing game save will be overwritten when you activate the PS2 cheats on this disc. You have been warned. 
To download, simply select the game save you want to download and hit the Download to Memory Card button. The status bar at the bottom of the screen will display progress of the download. When your save is fully downloaded, the message Download Complete OK will appear. Simply press X to confirm. Switch off your PS2 and insert the relevant game CD. Then simply load in your new game save as you would normally from your memory card. It really is that simple. All the saves stored on the CD have been developed by a selection of the greatest gamers around, so you're guaranteed the coolest saves ever. What could be easier? In this issue, we bring you the coolest saves for Dead or Alive 2, Midnight Club, and Smuggler's Run. Enjoy! New from the makers of Planet PSX comes Cheat Factory for FF9, the ultimate Final Fantasy IX companion. Now there's no need to get stuck in your favorite game. Cheat Factory contains all the cheats you need to bust Final Fantasy IX wide open, all playable straight from the CD. Just select your cheats using Cheat Factory's on-screen menu, then load up your game as normal to take control of the action. Cheats include have all items, maximum gill, infinite hit points, infinite movement points, and many, many more. This is an unbeatable offer. There's no need to send any money. Just pick up the phone. Call this number now, 09065 151401. And simply leave your name and address, and we'll pop your cheap factory CD in the post. No credit card or check is required. Calls cost £1.50 per minute at all times, so please ask permission from whoever pays the bill before you dial. Calls should last approximately three minutes. Lines are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. issue we've four sets of the super cool Yamaha TSS-1 home cinema system to be won. To be in with a chance of winning, all you have to do is answer the following question. Which part of the TSS-1 allows you to crank up the bass? A. The growler. B. The barker. C. The subwoofer. If you think you know the answer, call the competition line now on 09064 774480 and follow the online instructions. You'll be asked your answer and for your name and address. Lines will close at midnight on Monday the 12th of March 2001. Winners will be picked at random by our computer and announced in PSI 2's May issue. Winners details will also be posted on the Code Junkies website, www.codejunkies.com. Calls cost 60p a minute at all times, so get permission from whoever pays the bills before you dial. Enjoy big screen sound on the small screen with Yamaha's TSS-1 Home Cinema System. Yamaha's TSS-1 Home Theatre System is a compact 5.1 digital surround sound setup that incorporates the latest state-of-the-art sound technology including Dolby Digital, Dolby Surround and Digital Theatre Surround, bringing the multiplex experience into your living room at an affordable price. 
the speakers utilize Yamaha Active Servo technology, an exclusive method of sound reproduction which optimizes the interaction of the amplifier, enclosure and speaker, thereby increasing efficiency and producing extra deep bass. And of course the TSS-1 home theater system is fully compatible with your PlayStation 2. We've got four sets of this super cool kit to give away. Check out this issue's competition section for details of how to be in with a chance. With the PowerShot G1, Canon has launched a new and fully featured 3.34 million pixel digital camera for the advanced amateur and semi-professional photographer. Pin sharp focusing combined with sparkling performance and exceptional photographic flexibility makes the Canon PowerShot G1 the only sensible choice for advanced digital photographers. Downloading high quality images from the PowerShot G1 is fast, simple and reliable thanks to USB technology. While exceptional hard copy photographs can be created that rival conventional photographic prints. Robot Warlords are stomping onto a console near you soon, and in this issue's interview, PSI2 caught up with Stephen Marks of Midas Interactive to ask him about the strategy behind the game and its giant mech armies. This robot game is a completely new venture for Daz, completely away from their past fishing games. Um, and we're hoping it goes down well in the UK, especially with the uh, robot craze that seems to be taking over the nation. The year is 2002, uh, the place is Tokyo, um, an element of the army has um, decided to overrun the government. Your mission is uh, within seven days to liquidate that element of the army and your task is to control four or more bullets which are your characters if you like, your robots. At the beginning of each mission you configure your bullets so that, that reflects on how you set your moves during the game. Um, you're faced with a grid system in front of you which to set your moves and then you watch the action unfolding like a cinematic vision. At the start of each mission when you configure your robot, obviously you select um, which weapons you want your robot to have or your bullet to have. Um, each weapon actually dictates how far or how fast you can move across a certain period of the map. You can configure each robot, each body part of each robot, and each weapon of each robot. If you select heavy armor um, and heavy weapons, or fast and powerful if you want them to have lighter body weight. The weapon choice for the robots, you can either have um, combat weapons, or you can have short distance weapons, or medium distance weapons. That dictates how heavy your robot is and how fast they can move. Ever wondered what it would be like to have the ability to play your favorite games without any boundaries? Ever wondered how your friend breaks through to the highest levels of every game or beats your scores with ease? He probably didn't want you to know about Action Replay. Within the millions of lines of code that make up your favorite video games, there exist variables and vulnerabilities. With the ability to manipulate the variables, you have ultimate power over anything and everything. Infinite health, infinite lives, all weapons, all items, all characters. You go anywhere, you do anything, and you kill everything. The Action Replay Video Game Enhancer is available for PlayStation, PS2, N64, Game Boy, Dreamcast, and PC platforms. Constant code updates at CodeJunkies.com assure that you'll always have the power to beat the game. We wanted to give you a taste of the Action Replay's ultimate power. Once you see how Action Replay can change your gaming experience for these titles, just imagine what it can do for the rest of your games. 
In this issue, access the greatest codes for Alien Resurrection, Blade, Spyro Year of the Dragon, 007 Racing, and Dino Crisis 2.